I have experimented with many possible ways to create pair material, and I found the perfect settings, or so I thought, until I discovered the secret formula. Keep watching to learn how. Hello, my name is Adrian, and in today's video I will show you how to create probably the best looking pair material in Octane. We will start with one of the game changing features that Octane actually had for over a year, which I've been sleeping on. It's the standard surface. For whatever reason, I completely forgot about it, and there are so many possibilities related to this material. Now I'll guide you to creation of that exact pair material. Let's start from creating base for our material. Let's go to Create, Extensions, c for the Octane, and this time we're gonna use standard surface. Let's apply it to our model. Let's double click at our standard surface. Go to node editor. And here we're gonna click at our material node. Change the weight and base layer to one. Diffuse roughness to zero. Color to 10 in hue. Five in saturation and 100 in value. Now we're gonna move to specular layer in which we're gonna change roughness to 0.25 and IOR to three. In transmission layer, we're gonna change weight to 0.3, change the extra roughness to 0.8, and now we're gonna set color to 10 in hue, 10 in saturation, and 100 in value. Now let's move to subsurface, in which we're gonna set the weight to 0.4, scale to 0.03. For the color, we're gonna change hue to 10, saturation to 10 as well, and value to 100. And that's pretty much base for our pair of material. But there's few other nodes we can add to make it complete. First of these nodes gonna be fall off, which we're gonna apply to subsurface layer color. We're gonna change minimum value to one and maximum value to zero. We're also gonna change fall off skew factor to two. We're gonna add the octane gradient and apply it after the fall off map. And the settings for the gradient is gonna be 10 hue, 13 saturation and 17 value. For another slider, we're gonna use 10 in hue, 5 in saturation, and 100 for value. Now let's go back to our material node, and here we want to go to material layer and add layer. We're gonna add specular layer, and first thing we're gonna change in here is in transmission, and it's enabling the thin layer. Now let's move to IOR, in which we're gonna change IOR to 2. Now we can move to roughness, in which we're gonna change roughness to 0.3, and thin film layer, in which we're gonna change it to 0.3 and film IOR of 1. For bump in material layer, we're gonna add octane noise and connect it directly to bump and change the power to 0.3. This material layer will create color shifts around our pair material and the extra bump we added creates those really nice uneven color shifts around our highlights. And that's pretty much it for this pair material. But there's few other things worth mentioning. First of all, in transmission layer, changing weight to zero will cut rendering time by half. Same thing can be done with subsurface. If we change weight in subsurface to zero, it will completely change the pair material, although it still looks fairly close to what pair looks like, but it will make the rendering faster by four times. So keep it in mind if you want to optimize your scene a bit more. Also, another thing you can tweak here is of course IOR in material layer, which we can change to eight, and this will create really extreme color shifts around our perils. This is a bit too much for my taste, but it might be something you want to use yourself. Another really important note in here is this whole material depends on really good amount of diffuse depth and scatter depth. I use path tracing here with diffuse depth of 64 and scatter depth of 64. We can change it lower, but you can see the lower we get, the less soft it looks like. If you go to something like 8, you can really see how bad it looks like. I would say 16 is really the minimum you can go here, but for best results, definitely 64 and 32 is way to go. And that's it for this material. I would say standard surface is something I need to explore way more in my tutorials, and I'm definitely gonna go back to it a lot of times from now on. There's a few other things I want to mention before we finish this video, and it's of course my Patreon, in which you can find a lot of other stuff from previous tutorials and project file from this tutorial you are watching right now. And I think that's it. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button and let me know in the comments what types of tutorials you want to see next. I'm always open for any feedback and I'm always ready to explore new materials that I can create in Octane. See you in the next video. Bye.